The purpose of this documentary on replacing a Vanderhall dashboard is to share ideas with the community and those considering the purchase of a Vanderhall. Hi, my name is Joe. I live in South Florida and I enjoy driving my Carmel. I started to imagine what would make this ride even better. So I thought of a few projects and decided this one would be my first one to start and share with all of you. The Vanderhall lineup of vehicles have amazing lines. The dashboard is great and it should be fantastic. The dash and its instruments tell important stories about your travels. Driving a stock Vanderhall, I bet your happiness level is normally at 110%, but why not boost that feeling to 150% or more by seeing your gauges and switches on a real wood dashboard and center console? From my point of view, an investment in a real wood upgrade because it's installed in a Vanderhall, that dash would easily turn out to be valued in the marketplace at double its initial value. I'm not Warren Buffett. I know it's a good investment. By watching these videos, you be the judge and subscribe and let me know by adding comments below. This first video, which you are watching right now, is called Dashboard Removal. When my wooden dash is ready, the second one is called The Upgrade. And the final video is called People's Reaction. Let's get rolling. A part of Vanderhall's DNA is the hex bolt. In general, there are 43 different screwdriver types, the Kama Sutra of Engineering. The idea of a hex socket was probably conceived as early as the 1860s to the 1890s, but that such screws were probably not manufactured until around 1910. The Allen name is a registered trademark originated by the Allen Manufacturing Company of Hartford, Connecticut, circa 1910. William J. Allen invented the Allen wrench. The great thing about the hex bolt is that it is almost impossible to strip, as you likely have done with Phillips square and slotted screw bolts in the past. The tool used to unscrew a hex bolt, if you ever bought furniture from Ikea, you already know this, is the hex or Allen key or Allen wrench. You can also use Allen bits in screwdrivers and socket sets. On the Vanderhall, when a bolt is needed, to hold components together. Like the dashboard to the frame, 99% of the time, it's a hex bolt requiring a simple Allen tool. What I like about Vanderhall is the adoption of standards and a great design. Before you start taking off any kind of bolts on your dashboard, shut the electricity off from the main battery, okay? That switch is found in the storage compartment behind the driver's seat. Please refer to your owner's manual to find that little switch that you just press. Then afterwards, check to make sure that your car does not start. Then you're good to take off the dashboard. Just like tap the button. And then, when you come back here, Nothing. Nothing. Good. No electricity. Good news is that you'll be using a 532nd hex bit or a wrench for most of this work. Okay, there's only six bolts you need to remove in order to pull off the dashboard. Again, get your hex screwdriver ready because this will take about two minutes to do. Make sure you use a Ziploc bag to hold all the bolts and things that you take off your dashboard and center console. This way you won't lose anything and be in a pickle later on. Take your time. There's only six bolts to remove along with their washers. 
So as you take them off, remember, put them in your Ziploc bag. With all the bolts removed, just simply grab one of the um, braces from the rocker panel switch and slowly pull the dashboard away from the frame. For all the gauges, except the ignition switch and the rocker panel switch, you'll notice on the back of the gauge is a threaded uh, ring. You just simply um, twist that counterclockwise to uh, loosen the gauge from the dashboard. Also you'll notice in the back of the uh, gauge is a wire. Um, those wires are clipped in so you have to find the clip to depress and then gently pull the wire out. It's a simple process. Um, take your time. Don't feel um, freaked out about it. Uh, you'll figure it out. It's very simple to take these gauges out. As you're removing the gauges, um, the wire is tethered obviously to the gauge. In order to get the gauge out of the dashboard, you have to remove the wire. Make sure you replace the wire back into the gauge. This way you keep track of which wire goes to what gauge and there's no uh, mix up later on or confusion. All right, and then the other thing too, obviously is put the ring back on the, the um, gauges along the way. And then when we come next, uh, it'll be to the ignition switch and uh, I'll slow down the speed of that one a little bit to explain the, the little bit of persuasion you have to use to get that out. The ignition switch is a little tricky. There's a switch at the very top of the wire bracket there that you have to kind of push in. And as you're pushing it in, you kind of rock it back and forth a little bit. Uh, and eventually as you're pulling out and rocking it, it's going to disengage from the ignition switch. Just be patient, you'll get it done. The case that holds the ignition switch fitting into the dash here is a bit tricky to get out. You just have to kind of push it in on the side and try to push it through evenly. Um, there's a bit of a notch in the dashboard that if it's not a perfect even push, it gets kind of jammed in there a little bit. So uh, just be patient, take your time, and um, there's that little notch there. Just uh, be aware of that when you're pushing it through, and uh, you'll get it done. And as you get all the components here apart, remember to reattach them and put them back into the dash so nothing goes missing. And then everything is understood when you go to put all these components back into your brand new dash. The next thing you're going to do is take out the rocker panel and its switches. Um, you're not going to be removing the wires from these switches at all. You just have to um, disconnect every single switch and then remove the panel. But before we do that, we need to get our label machine because uh, we want to keep Bluetooth to Bluetooth um, and speed control to speed control to have them all lined up uh, easily um, when we go to put in back the new dash. You don't need a fancy brother label machine. You can also use a piece of masking tape uh, to write it on. Um, I just wanted to um, kind of be a pro at it. Wrap your labels around the uh, cables going into the toggle switches and you'll need to get a socket to uh, undo the nuts that are holding in the um, toggle switches. So as you take them off, make sure that you put them in your Ziploc bag. And once those uh, nuts are off, those switches just pop right out. Having the labels on them, you'll know where Bluetooth goes, you'll know where speed control goes, hazard lights, etc. Then on the back here, there are these uh, small bolts and nuts that you have to use a socket uh, to um, remove them. And that's for the panel 
on the front that uh, that the switches sit in. And these are little small bolts, so make sure as you take them off, be careful and put them in your bag. You're done. Next is your uh, glove box lid. Simply remove the three nuts, put them in your Ziploc, and you're done. Removing the center console is super easy. Uh, remove the three bolts uh, using your Allen key socket, remembering to keep the, um, the bolts in your Ziploc bag. And the, once you have them off, there's uh, two nuts on the um, heated seat switches. And at that point, you can take off the panel and uh, kind of wiggle it over your parking brake because of the leather there, kind of keeps it a little bit tight. And then there's the stereo controls. So you remove the nut that's on that um, switch there. Uh, some of the two of the cables you can uh, remove by hand. The third one has a shrink wrap on it. Just use a knife to cut it. It took just two hours on a Saturday afternoon to complete this job. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel to see how the new dash and center console are installed. I can't wait!